Welcome to part one of Zrug the Dragon Tamer from Bobo Rhino Miniatures. In this painting tutorial, I'm going to go over the entire painting process. Um, the figure was started with a Zenithel light from the top left. The goal here is to create a very uh, strong and dynamic light. I like to try and tell a story with all of my figures, no matter if it's a bust or a full figure. I want to place them in some kind of environment. And when I was looking at this figure, the story came to me of this character uh, stealing a dragon egg from a cave and the idea is to create this strong light shaft coming from the top left, a cool light source coming from the cave, and a warm OSL coming from the dragon egg. Here I'm beginning to sketch the skin of the orc, uh, the, this main light source. I didn't want to go for the typical green orc. I knew that the, the lighting was going to be more important than necessarily the color of his skin. So I decided to go with a more pale gray orc. Uh, I, I often like to, instead of just using a, a standard black and white primer, I like to get a, the atmospheric lighting of the of the figure down first. So I will spray the the figure with a, a zenithal, a standard gray, a white and black zenithal, or gray and black. And then I cover the, the gray with a um, underlying color, in this case a, a cool blue, almost like an ultramarine blue or slightly purple. I mix a skin tone by mixing the, uh, some of this blue and the rosy flesh to create a, a chromatic gray. Uh, I then just begin to place the main light sources. I want a very strong contrast between, between the sunlight coming into the cave and the cool um, bluish, almost purplish, uh, ambient light of the cave. So by mixing some of the blue and the rosy flesh, I get this uh, slightly warm but still gray uh, skin tone. And as I begin to make some transition to the, the cooler shadows, I mix some of this uh, purple into the flesh tone. I want to just block in the light source. Uh, the shapes are the most important thing to me right now. Blending is not particularly important. I just want to establish where the light hits the model. Um, one thing you'll see a lot on this figure is the, the intense cast shadows. So this unusual kind of diamond shape on his on his uh, stomach is created from the armor plating on his arm and then is a lot of it is blocked by the the dragon arm that goes over over top of his shoulders here I mix a little more warm flesh tone into the lights and I can begin to push the the overall lighting further. I want to build up the light source until it uh, gets quite bright and pale. Because my shadow tone my, of my my ambient uh, value of my shadows is not super dark, I need to really uh, create a super intense light in order to 
and give that effect of a, of a pale flesh. Here I'm using a little bit more of the purple mixed with uh, some of the, the grayish flesh tone to create a, or the occlusion shadows. So these are the shadows within shadows. Uh, areas like around his armpit and then the, the deepest shadows are where these, the ambient light of the cave cannot reach. So we'll push the, the light source uh, or the shadows here even deeper in order to create uh, even stronger contrast. Here mixing some of this pale flesh and the, uh, the warm sunny skin tone, I can, I can increase the lights even further in order to create some of my highlight values. So grabbing some of the uh, a mix of purple, black, and the blue, I'm going to start to push some of these tones down even more. Some of this, this blue, this intermediate blue that I have is not quite as dark as I want it. So just by placing this, this purplish gray over top of some of these areas, I'm I'm able to darken this even further and begin to create some of the secondary light that is coming from his top or his top left or top right of the screen. This is going to uh, interplay with the strong warm light source from the outside of the cave and create a, a bit of a two lighting effect to to create uh, an even more dynamic um, lighting scheme and really create a, a dramatic feeling. So now using some of the, the lighter flesh tone, which is very white uh, and the blue, I'm able to begin to sketch in some of these secondary light sources that will really help frame the figure and we'll end up with uh, quite a dark shadow running down the center of the figure. In some of these transition areas, I'm just beginning to play some of the form shadows. Uh, it's not really blending at this stage, but I'm just, I'm just softening some of the, the transitions so I can get a better idea of the shape of the musculature and volumes. This is a, quite the unusual skin tone because I'm going for such a gray flesh tone. Uh, what on the palette might look almost pure gray can begin to look either warm or cool depending on the surrounding color. Because the, the ambient shadows are so purple and blue that that almost pure gray tone will begin to look more warm in contrast to those very cool colors. Uh, the opposite could be done with a uh, gray tone in very warm areas. The grays are extremely powerful in this way that they allowed you to create a, a contrast of temperature without having to go to two extremes. So here I'm just trying to, again, using some of this, this purplish gray, uh, begin to give some just overall shape to the, the musculature. I just want to define these shapes well and begin to render some of the volumes. Because this is all in shadow, the value contrast is not going to be super high in the shadow areas, and I have to rely on a bit more subtle differences in value and uh, color contrast to create these shapes. Here I begin to really start to, to push and define the the light shaft here. I'm 
this highlight will uh, hit almost a pure white. This pinkish tone is his value is not super bright, but you can tell compared to the the darker blues and purples, it, it feels almost white by comparison. So here I'm changing this blue before uh, a bit closer to a gray. The color saturation of the blue at that stage was a bit too much for me, and I'm I'm just searching for for the right color. It's almost this lilac tone. I think it's important to be uh, fluid and be willing to make changes at this early stage when when searching for the the correct tone. So I'm, I'm constantly just making small adjustments in order to find the, the exact color I'm looking for. Here I'm adding a bit of whole red to the mixture. This, this red is going to um, give me a bit more warmth to the, the really deep shadows. So the, the shadows are going to go through um, this dark purple and then to this almost wine red. This will add a bit more life to the skin. And give an interesting color contrast to uh, all of this, this blue and, and grays. And will eventually... Uh, work well to complement the very intense reds that the, the dragon scales are going to be. Here I have the head of the figure. I've decided to leave it separate in order to more easily be able to reach some of these areas. Because when it's in the model, some of the sides of his face can be very difficult to reach, or the top of his head can be very difficult to reach with the the headdress, the, the dragon headdress that he has. Uh, so leaving it as a separate piece at this stage allows me to more easily reach some of these these areas and uh, control the figure better. But I will often check with the... Um, I can remove the head from this putty and, and place it onto the figure to check to see how it's working together. You see the strong shape here that I've painted right across the top of the forehead. Um, this is the, the cast shadow of the, the dragon's upper jaw, or not his jaw, the dragon's upper uh, mouth. So I'm just blocking in the where the lights will hit, um, and then I will begin to uh, create more more variations so essentially it, it's almost like a cell shading if you want to think of it that way where i can just place where either the lights hit or where they don't right so you have either light or shadow and then when i need to i can begin to paint some of the form shadows right these are the the more softer rounded shadows that blend and you have either you have either 
hard shadows or soft shadows. Hard shadows being the cast shadows and soft shadows being the, the form shadows that have a gradient to them. I just want to separate the, the light from the shadow. So I, be, I begin to build more of this skin tone on top. Working in, in pretty thick layers at this stage. I'm I'm looking for coverage less than uh, blending. I want to be able to, to cover the area in, you know, one layer instead of having to do multiple layers. So here, because all of the blue is um, messing with my perception of some of the value, I just go ahead and base coat the the beard and uh, with this mix of purple and black to give myself a very dark um, chromatic black. Uh, the beard in shadow will be a, a pure black. So you can see how just how much lighter the shadows of the skin are than than the than the beard itself. Not all of your shadows need to go to pure black. The shadows of something pale like his skin will, depending on the ambient light, will have a much higher value than the shadows of something that is uh, naturally darker, like a black beard. So now I continue to push the lights more. I'm starting to focus on some of the, the smaller volumes of the head, understanding that there is some uh, more shape and roundness to the forehead of his upper lip pushing the light to the left side of his face. I'm not too worried about things like um, some of the small wrinkles when I'm doing this. Right? The, the mid-tones of, of his uh, mid-tones can function as shadows within areas of light. So I just want to think about either where light hit or where it doesn't. And then here on the beard, mixing some of the warm flesh tone into the black gives me, again, this, this slightly warm chromatic gray. I can begin using just vertical brush strokes following the, the shape that the hair grows. Uh, I can begin to place light on his beard that uh, begins to give overall shape to the beard and also creating a little bit of texture at the same time. Here mixing the black and some of the blue, I can start to place some of the this fill light coming in from the other side. Again, this will help frame the side of his face against the, the dark shadow of the background. By adding more of this light orangish uh, skin tone to the black, again increase the the light of the beard using small brush strokes to to create the texture of the beard, and further increase the light. I base coat his nose ring and some of the other small details of his face just to you know better see the some of these shapes
now again I can begin to push some of the uh, these darker occlusion shadows in order to create some uh, extra depth and form to the shadow areas. I'm pushing the light even further, getting closer to that almost white of the, the extremely pale flesh tone. And now I can begin to uh, focus on some of these smaller micro volumes of, of his forehead, the, all of the wrinkles of his brow. If I overdo these by leaving too much shadow in these areas, it can look um, too cartoonish. I don't want these super deep recesses in the wrinkles of his skin. I want them to be slightly more subtle than that. Here, using some of the blue. I just begin to place some of this fill light from the side, which again will help frame the face. Here I'm using a little glaze of some of the whole red mixed with the rosy flesh tone. This is going to add a little more pink to the skin, give it a, a bit more of a natural look. Also, the glaze will help soften some of the transition. And then around the eyes, I want him to have a very deep um, kind of recessed evil look about him. So having uh, very sunken eyes will, will help create that kind of menacing look to him. Here I'm just base coating the teeth with a mix of the red and the purple. This is, I'll push the lights on these also, but this will eliminate some of that that blue that I don't want. Okay, so here I'm grabbing some some fuchsia skin. This is uh, quite pink, and I'm using it in very thin layer to on the the cast shadow here in order to create a bit of like a chromatic aberration effect. This is going to create a, an interesting, um, really strong saturated color in the transition point between the light and the shadow and again give him a little more liveliness to his skin you can see as i mix this and then i use this to create some some mid-tones and shadows and and give him some color around his uh, face and create some of these mid-tone shadows in the wrinkles of his forehead it's also useful here on the lips to create some extra um, blood flow and color around these these sections of the face that might have a bit more rosiness to them. Things like the nose and ears, the lips. So after the glaze, I need to push the lights back up again. Okay. 
Now, it's a constant kind of push and pull effect where I need to uh, increase the light or increase the, the depth of the shadows and then and then find that balance of where the the contrast feels right to me. So yeah, further darken the eye sockets. Um, the intention will be to give him a a glowing effect to the eyes. So some of this purple color gives me a nice uh, intermediate point for these these shadow areas. Again, further pushing the light on his forehead. This is, of course, on any figure, but especially on bus, the, the face is the main focal point of the figure. So I really need to create um, the dramatic lighting here in order to help further pull attention to the face. Uh, you'll see, especially once we really start to have a lot of intense color on the figure, that uh, those areas could easily pull attention away. Uh, using a bit of whole red mixed uh, into here, I create a, a bit of warmth to the, the teeth. And I further push the light on the beard. I want to, when I'm doing these kind of um, texture brush strokes for hair, I don't want them all to be perfectly parallel. I want to have some of them overlap over top of each other. So you can kind of think of it like drawing little M shapes. Uh, this will help that, that hair to feel like it has more depth to it as the hairs crisscross over top of each other and creates a nice uh, layered effect as opposed to like a perfectly manicured straight lines. So here I'm grabbing some red and I begin to, to place the red around the eye sockets to give him this deep uh, glowing eyes. Here using a, a little bit of this intermediate tone, I begin to to find some of these these small wrinkles a little more and blend some of the the shadow of his the cast shadow of the dragon headdress and I can define a bit more of these these deep wrinkles of his face to further give him this this menacing look A glaze of purple on the lips helps to further separate the the kind of color of the the lips from the skin. Once you have this, uh, your overall lighting established, you can, I start working in thinner layers of paint to create smaller and smaller adjustments. So here using the red, now I can begin to paint in his, his eyeballs, creating this kind of pinkish tone. And as I mo add more of that, that orangish flesh to the mixture, it'll uh, create a much warmer red tone
the lack of pupils and and glowing eyes here also further gives him this this menacing evil look. All right, make some small adjustments to uh, soften the transition of that the very deep recesses of his eyes with the the rest of the skin. I restore some of the pink that was lost. Uh, the the cast shadow is interesting here because the cast shadow forms uh, as it goes across his forehead. It eventually is going to connect to the natural form shadow of his face if the lighting is coming from the left. The right side of his face would be in shadow, even without the the dragon head hood that kind of goes over top of the face. So I need that that cast shadow and form shadow to connect. Um, the, one of the most important things I can try and tell you with when doing cast shadows like this is that shadows don't overlap, right? They don't stack with each other. A cast shadow cannot make an area of shadow darker. It's either, it's just the lack of light. So if a ca cast shadow goes into a form shadow, they become one shadow. Just parts of it might have a hard edge and other parts might have a soft edge. And I'm just glazing some, some of this deep purple red to further enhance these shadow areas is around the eyes and then his brow to deepen his scowl and glazing some of this dark red just to intensify the color Here, using a bit of that skin tone and whole red, now I can begin to place the light on his teeth. Uh, I'm going to have to, you can see it kind of makes like a nice um, brownish tone. I'm going to have to go from a, because the, the entire figure uh, is going to have this sort of idea of uh, warm lights and, and cool shadows. All of my grays, which you would typically think of teeth as kind of grayish, uh, all of my my shadows need to to cross right from from warm tones to dark tones. Here I'm just further making small adjustments. Shading the side of his nose. I decided uh, after some analyzing that the skin tone was feeling a bit uh, too close to a human skin tone for an orc. Uh, and in order to fix that, I've added a bit of this almost kind of yellow ochre greenish tone to my palette and I'm just making adjustments to the skin tone here uh, in order to make his skin feel a bit more unnatural. 
right? So to remove some of that pink and make him not green, but kind of yellowish, I can begin to, to put some of this color into his, in, uh, his skin in the lights. And this, this is going to make him uh, feel less, less natural. I've also painted some of the small cast shadows of the, the teeth of the dragon on his forehead. And because I've added that green, I now need to reestablish my, my highlights. In the end, it's a, uh, it's a quite subtle change to the mid-tones, but I think it helps the figure overall feel more like a, a fantasy character as opposed to the kind of pinkish human flesh that I was reaching. I, I still want it to... I don't want it to be like a green orc. I want it to be a pale orc, but I still want it to feel, um, you know, a bit unnatural. One of, that's what, I mean, one of the great things about any of these fantasy creatures like orcs, goblins, uh, things like that, is that you can really play around with the skin tone and um, mess with slightly different colors and and still make a uh, a really believable flesh but it's not as you know natural like it's not a human flesh tone you know, just establishing some of the the small wrinkles around the eye Adding a little bit more red on the nose. So we, we create an, an unnatural flesh tone, but then use some of the, the red around, you know, the nose and the lips to to give a bit of realism to this unrealistic fantasy creature. So here I'm now I'm starting to establish some of the lights on the the tusks. And you can see I move all around. This is the same color I was using on the tusks I can use as a mid-tone on the flesh. Uh, whenever I I grab a color from my palette. I can use it in multiple places on the figure in order to create a, a bit of color harmony throughout, especially with these these very gray tones. Um, they have a, a lot of uh, uses. Further establish a bit of the cast shadow of the nose across his cheek. Now I'm really starting to push the light on the tusks. I want to make sure that they're on the, the top left of them here in order to create the, the shine of the teeth from the, from the sun. And the same white, white tone can be used to uh, create the glow in the eyes and even some, some final lights on the skin.
these little micro details and little tiny volumes of folds and wrinkles in the skin. You know, the the contrast doesn't have to be super high in order to uh, give them definition. You can a bit more subtle uh, contrast here can can feel a bit more natural. Okay, using some of this this kind of turquoise color, I'm going to place some lights, uh, this fill light on the side of the face. Again, this helps work to to silhouette the the other side and create a a strong terminator in the this between the light and shadow sign and give a further bit of um, you know fantasy ambience to the character so mixing a bit of that red with the green I don't want or the the green blue I don't want a, a pure blue on his teeth um, can create those those uh cold lights on the on the opposite side of his teeth. Here I'm just placing some light on his gums that have a bit more red in them. I'll begin to place the lights on the smaller, the smaller teeth and further push the light on the tusks. This I'm kind of going in uh, vertical lines, just like the beard hairs here. I can do the same thing with the tusks to create some of the the striation in the tusks. Define the the individual teeth, and I can push the the shadows on the, the large tusks a bit more. I really want that shadow side and light side of the, the teeth to have that strong contrast to individually frame each tooth and give him his menacing smile. Very thin glazes here can create some subtle variation in the skin tones. I begin to push the light on the teeth even more, creating that shine. You can see that I flip and rotate the head a lot. Uh, this lets me use the shape of the brush to my advantage. 
where when I start the brush stroke in the the corner, I'm able to get a much more tapered line. Oh. So I can begin my brush stroke at a very tiny point, and as I apply pressure, the the brush will begin to flatten out some and create a slightly thicker line. And this way I can create really thin tapered lines in order to to use the shape of the brush to my advantage to create the the kind of shape to the tooth that I want. I further establish some of this fill light on the teeth. And then using these small dots, I can create the little striations in the in the gums or in the, the lips um, to give a bit of uh, natural texture to his his lips. I'll slowly begin to push the light here. Uh, if I really push the light on his lips, that's going to give and his gums that'll give this uh, kind of wet appearance to it by having really strong concentrated lights. It'll give a, a bit of glossiness to the, the lips. Now I decide I need to push the light on the hair a little bit more to give a bit of shine to the hair of the beard. So even though that the beard is now quite bright, it still feels black. Hmm. The, the fact that the shadows are very dark black uh, combined with a um, bit of small glaze here just to unify everything a little bit and, and return some of those shadows. Um, the difference in, in the the ambient shadows of the, the two materials is what informs you that this is just a naturally darker material, right? If I went pure black with the, the shadows of the skin, uh, they would feel like they have the same overall natural brightness, which they don't in this case. <laughs> 